So now you, I've shown you some good examples, but really getting to, this, to, the, to the next step as a clinical platform, something that can actually help somebody with some severe motor disabilities, there's some problems. And part of that is with EEG and single unit systems, they have features to them which really prohibit practical application. <coughs> EEG uh, gives you relatively simple control, and, and because it has problems with signal to noise, it gives you somewhat erratic function. It really takes a long time to train to get very simple levels of control. Single unit systems, as, I, as I've shown you, as you, they get very high level of control, but they're relatively invasive. You have to actually put them in the cortex. And also, and this is kind of more, very clinically relevant, is that scar starts to form around those very small electrodes. And because of that, they, they lack what we call durable effect. They only last for around six months in monkeys and around six months in uh, some preliminary human trials. And what that means is that you have to do kind of repeat surgeries every six months. And that really isn't practical for somebody with some severe disabilities where they have to keep on relearning how to use this. And where kind of our group at Washington University came into the picture was that it was an alternative strategy, was using what's called electrocorticography or ECOG. And that's signal acquired from the surface of the brain without penetrating the brain. And that signal has some unique features in that it's much more robust than EEG. You can see a much broader frequency. It has much better regional discrimination, meaning that you can really see kind of you know, fine points of act activation, millimeters versus the centimeters with EEG. And because you're not penetrating the brain, scarring is much less of an issue. This is actually kind of a picture for, hopefully nobody's too faint of heart here, but this is actually a picture of a human brain dur during surgery. Uh, and we actually put these grid electrode arrays for a clinical indication uh, for localizing seizures. There's a certain population of patients with intractable epilepsy actually require the placement of these electrodes over the surface of the brain so we can find where those seizures are coming from and then actually take that part of the brain out to treat their seizures. This also provides us with a very unique opportunity to essentially get invasive electrical activity from the brain. So these patients have these electrodes over the surface of their brain for a couple weeks while we wait for them to have seizures. And during that period of time, we uh, actually do experiments with them where we have them participate in various uh, uh, cognitive tasks. And what we found was, uh, and kind of really to, somewhat to our surprise, it was kind of, you know, kind of walking into this Aztec uh, gold mine where we suddenly found all this really cool information, was that where EEG really gave us only frequencies of around you know, 0 to 40 hertz. When we started to look at the, you know, the, these frequencies um, under the skull, there's kind of a whole world opened up of uh, these high frequencies. And what we started to discover is that these high frequencies carry substantial information about cognitive intentions. And this is just a, a brief example. Uh, when we looked at, for instance, pa uh, monkeys, or monkeys, uh, patients moving, uh, uh, moving a joystick around, kind of like that manipulandum that I showed you earlier with the monkey moving it around in circles, was that depending on which direction they moved, these high frequencies were able to tell us what direction uh, the, the human being was intending to move. And so, for instance, when they moved in this very simple example, looking at one electrode over motor cortex, and we looked at frequency over time, that when they moved to the left, the high frequencies here would go up, and when they moved to the right, that those high frequencies would go down in amplitude. And so we started to find multiple different electrodes that could essentially help us predict which direction the person wanted to move that cursor.